Ooh, Pamela Lillian Isley, AKA Poison Ivy, is certainly one of the greatest comic book villains of all time, and definitely one of the most notable fictional femme fatales. With a mastery over the plant world, her signature tactic is poison. But what kind of bio lipstick would she need to make any kiss your last? Thanks to Veilgirl496 for her variation on this question. Poison Ivy doesn't always use her lips as deadly weapons, but when she does, her targets ingest a lethal amount of toxin, either secreted by her mutated body or inside the chemistry of applied lipstick. But if we want to figure out what kind of poison she could be using, we first have to determine what it does. Thank you. If we want a poison or toxin that is deadly enough to kill with a single kiss, we are looking for a chemical that is potent because a lethal dose has to spread thin over just the surface area of Ivy's lips. Scientists measure the potency of a poison as a chemical's LD50, or median lethal dose. This is the amount of some chemical that will kill half of the population exposed to it, 50% over some period of time. The LD50 is usually given in units like milligrams per kilogram because body weight matters. The more mass you have, the more stuff there is to poison. However, I should tell you that every single chemical on Earth has an LD50. For example, if the average human is 62 kilograms and the LD50 for water is 90 grams per kilogram, then it would take around six kilograms of water or 14 pounds to be a lethal dose for half of the population that drank that dose in a very short amount of time. It looks something like uh, about this much. Yep, 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 those are, yep, those are how much, it's, it's still going, it's, and a third of that amount of sugar would be lethal. For the average person, that's two kilograms of sugar, or around four pounds, which looks, which looks something like this. Twice that amount. We should stop visualizing like that. Even medicines like aspirin can be lethal if you take too much of it in too short an amount of time per your body weight. For the average person using the LD50, that is just 12 grams. And if they're 500 milligram tablets, that's just 24 tablets. I should note though, that most of these studies come from rats. So the link to humans isn't direct. Poison Ivy would need a chemical a lot more potent than sugar or water though. She would need something dangerous enough that a lethal dose could fit in a single smear of red. Oh, oh, thank you. Wait, poison! Pa Powerful toxins are terrifying because their LD50s are small enough that you can inhale or ingest a lethal dose without even knowing it. But trachotoxin, or BTX, is a extremely powerful poison found in poison arrow frogs and some birds and beetles. But trachotoxin binds to the sodium channels in your nerve cells, permanently keeping them open. This prevents the nerves from functioning properly, which leads to paralysis, and cardiac arrest. In just just two millionths of a gram per kilogram of you, and you have a 50-50% chance of dying. For the average person, that could be contained in just two salt grains worth of volume, which is way too small for me to even visualize for, that, that is too much salt, stop throwing things at me. One of the carriers of batrachotoxin, the golden arrow frog, can carry a hundred times the lethal dose for an average sized person inside its tiny body. And it's tiny. Look how potent, get, get back. Get back you slimy amphibian demon. I don't want any of your secreted poisons. The most poisonous poison that we know of though doesn't come from any animal, it comes from bacteria. Botulinum toxin is a toxin produced by a bacterium that when inhaled or injected into you makes its way into your nerve cells and slices up proteins that those nerve cells need to function, causing paralysis. The toxin's ability to cause paralysis is why some forms of the toxin are used in cosmetics injected into your face to straighten out wrinkles by paralyzing parts of your face, Botox. 
Another type of botulinum toxin though, type H, has the lowest LD50 that we're aware of. Just one nanogram per kilogram of person. For the average person, this is equivalent to the weight of a single human cell. And that is actually so small that I cannot visualize it for you. Just don't, don't throw like dead skin cells at me or something. That was sugar. But if Poison Ivy is producing these toxins from her lips or applying them with lipstick, there's a problem. As L. Rigdon points out in a blog post in the show notes, poisoning someone, yeah, that's good. Poisoning someone with lipstick is incredibly dangerous. Oh yeah, and impractical. Cause you could just as easily, oh yeah, poison yourself. If we're talking about poisons that are deadly enough to be measured in the nanograms per kilogram, then just talking or touching lips together, or the act of kissing itself could just as easily transfer poison into you and kill you instead. Mm. Mm. Ooh, that's for you, big boy. Poison Ivy Cannon states that Dr. Isley is immune to the poisons that she uses, so we don't have to worry about her poisoning herself. So I'm super glad I put on lipstick for that. So how do we choose our poison then? Give it, give it. I need the anti- Being a botanist, Red is known to use plant-based toxins to kill with a kiss. So this rules out all of the poisons that we've looked at so far, and even similarly deadly stuff like the pufferfish's tetrodotoxin, even if objectively, these are some of the most potent chemicals on the planet. That doesn't mean that plants can't pack a poisonous punch though. Both ricin, which can be distilled from the seeds of the castor oil plant, and abrin, which comes from the seeds of the rosemary pea, have LD50s that are measured in millionths of a gram per kilogram and can kill a full-sized person with less than the mass of a snowflake. Oh wait, poison! Pa! Pa! But again, we are still missing something. Poison Ivy's kiss of death should be able to kill very quickly, which not all potent poisons do. Both ricin and abrin, like we just mentioned, take hours to invade cells and slice up proteins and prevent them from working properly. No, even if the LD50 is higher, we need a poison that can kill in minutes or even seconds. False alarm, there is one poison that is found in plants that if ingested by humans can cause near instantaneous death, cyanide. A cyanide is a chemical compound with a group that looks like this, a carbon atom bonded to a nitrogen atom. Toxic cyanides do not have LD50s anywhere near botrachotoxin or botulinum toxin, but they are found in over a thousand species of plants like apples and almonds. So if poison ivy generated cyanides within her body using her plant powers and attached them to something that would also be available, hydrogen, then she would get a colorless, odorless liquid that the amount she would need to kill a full-size man, literally this much, could easily be spread over the surface of her lips. Toxic cyanide can also present itself as a crystalline salt when combined with other atoms. So if poison ivy had a power over generating cyanide, a deadly kiss from her might look glossy, even sparkly. Cyanide is one of the fastest acting poisons, period. Depending on the dose, it can kill a full-size person in under 60 seconds. So what kind of toxin is on Poison Ivy's lips? Well, there are many candidates for poisons, but even the most potent of them don't quite fit. If Poison Ivy wants to work with plant-based toxins and wants to kill with a kiss of death quickly, then her lips are probably coated with a form of cyanide. And cyanide even has an antidote, like we've seen Ivy mention before. It's not nearly as deadly as pufferfish juice or frog goo, but it is deadly enough to easily fit into a single application of that perfect shade of red. Because science. Right, antidote. I should, I should, I should have pro- No matter what, poison ivy used on her lips though, they would probably get around those rubber lips that Batman and Robin used to defeat her kiss abilities because 
many poisons can also be inhaled if they are, you know, liquidized and, you know, you're, you're tonguing a little bit. <laughs> it would beat you even if you had rubby lips and bat nips. Nips and lips. Dot com. Don't go there. Thank you so much for watching, Gregory. If you like this video, hit that button. You know what button I mean, and the other button that I mean. And you can also follow Because Science across social media, at Because Science around here, and me around there. Thanks.